Welcome everybody. So, I've been playing the Magicka Nightblade, and I haven't shared the build with you guys yet, but here it is. I really wanted to share this sooner, but I waited on sharing it because they buffed the Torx pack set on the PTS, and I wanted to get the build put together on the PTS for you guys so you could see what it'll look like in the Stonethorns patch. Nonetheless, this is my Magicka Nightblade build. It does a lot of damage. It has a ton of sustain, so you can stay in Cloak for a very long time, but it is also capable of fighting outside of Cloak as well. It's a, a pretty vicious all-around build, but it is definitely focused on doing as much damage as possible to our opponents. So I played this build uh, solo when I was playing it, but you could play it in a group if you wanted to. I think the strength of this build, however, is just going to be that solo kind of gank gameplay, and you're just moving around the battlefield picking off the targets that you can get those big smacks on, and then using that trolley defensive kit that Nightblade has access to to keep yourself alive, um, moving around the group and continuing to pressure them with some nice spikes. Now, I have set up this build on the Stonethorns uh, public test server so you guys can see what it will look like for this upcoming patch. Um, that being said, the gameplay is from the Greymore patch, so it's actually going to be better next patch. This build is not as strong in the footage as it could be. So be sure to take a look at all of that gameplay footage in the second half of the video. If you want a written guide to this bad boy, check out my website, ChristopherESO.com for it. There's a link to that down below for you as well. And next to it, there's a link to my Twitch. If you guys want to catch me live because you have questions about builds, or if you guys just want to see what I'm working on at the time, you can check it out there. And without further ado, let's take a look at that build. Starting off, we are a Khajiit on this Nightblade build. I've talked about Khajiit being one of my favorite races for Nightblade all around due to it going easily for a Stamina or Magicka build and then getting that 10% critical damage and healing bonus, Nightblade being the crit monster that it is. Khajiit is just such a great fit. And for this kind of build, Khajiit is definitely the best option because this will amplify our Torx Pact enchants further than anything else can. Now, taking a look at the max stat here, we got the 32k mag on the front bar, 24 to 26k HP, and 11k stamina. But the impressive part here is in that sustain department. We are going to buff up with our potion here. We've got 2,264 Magicka recovery, 1,570 health recovery, and almost 1,300 stamina recovery. So this build can fight for a very long time. You shouldn't have resource issues. And if you absolutely need Magicka back, we've got a restoration staff on the back bar for even more sustain coming from that. And when we take a peek at the spell damage, it is coming in at a whopping 1,756. Now, we have got Torx Pact with the Infused Enchant on the back bar for 655 spell damage, as well as the Master's Inferno Staff for another 600 spell damage on the front bar. So that's 1,255 additional spell damage on top of here, not including the 20% bonus that we get. So that'll put us well over 3k spell damage on this build. You'll be sitting around 3.1k-ish. Uh, when you're fully buffed. And then, of course, that spell crit of 50%. This is pretty bare bones, I'm not going to lie. We're in a Torx pack build, and having a high uh, crit rate for a Torx pack build is super important to keep that enchant damage as high as possible. So 50% is honestly as high as we could push it with the sets that we're running, and uh, you don't really want to be below this for a Torx pack spec. So in no CP, you can still play this build. You'll be at 41 or 42% crit but I think it will function a lot better in a CP environment where you can utilize the crit chance a little bit better. And taking a look at the build's defenses here, we've got 20k spell resistance and physical resistance with 2,600 critical resist. This is pretty bare bones for a light armor build. We've got a little bit of CP helping to pad this stuff as well, but we've got no impen on or anything, so we aren't super durable if we allow our opponents to smack us a lot on this spec. Now, of course, we have got the Shadow Mundus here, and uh, this is going to increase your critical damage and your critical healing in the new patch. So this is a huge buff from what it was doing for us last patch. We are running full Divines to help amplify the Shadow as far as possible. You can run a mix of Divines well-fitted on this build, and that's really up to how much stamina sustain you think you need. For the food, we have got the Clockwork Citrus Filet. This is going to give us the max health, the max Magicka, and then health and Magicka recovery. And all these stats, of course, very important for our survivability and our outgoing damage. And then finally, for the potion on this build, we have got the Essence of Detection. 
And this is such a good potion for this kind of build because we have a super high stealth uptime ourselves. So this lets us know if there are other Nightblades around us. And when you're playing that stealth counter stealth game against enemy Nightblades, this comes in so handy. This is also going to be our major sorcery buff, which is super important. And then, of course, that maximum Magicka return and the Magicka recovery buff, which is important too. Now, taking a look at the gear we've got on this build, we're going to start off with that first set. We've got the five-piece Torugs packed, and you guys know why we picked this set. It gives us a lot. It's going to give us armor, max health, and armor in the two, three, four-piece this patch, and then it decreases the cooldown of your enchants by 33% and increases their potency by 45% in the new patch absolutely fantastic and here you can see the uh enchant value without minor berserk on our front bar is 6.9k so we get a lot of damage on this enchant and this is on about a 1.5 second cooldown so you will be smacking this almost every single time you hit someone with your destro staff now that's not the only thing that Torx Pact offers this build. We also get a huge amount of spell damage when we poke someone with our back bar resto staff. The back bar resto poke is super important for this build and uh, it's very easy to cancel it with cloak so you don't even leave stealth when you poke someone with the resto staff. It's a very important technique to learn, I think, for this style of gank blade. Now let's move on to the next set. We have got Kalorian's Legacy. And I chose this guy because we needed more burst on the Mag Blade. Honestly, Torx Pack by itself was not doing enough in the Greymore patch, and I felt like we needed the extra pepper. But now they've buffed Torx Pact. So you can still run Kalorians with this build. I would actually say Kalorians is probably one of the best ways to go. But if you don't want to go this route, you could actually go for Amberplasm instead and then change up your Jewelry Enchants to be Spell Damage. And then you're not using the uh, proc from Kalorians. You're just kind of trading it out for more Spell Damage. So it's kind of up to how you want to build uh, your character yourself. I really like the Kalorians Legacy because of the maximum burst that it would provide. But the old school Amber Torx combo, I think, is a lot more viable this patch thanks to the changes that Zenimax has made to those sets. Now, Chlorian's Legacy is also great because it will provide us with spell crit, spell damage, spell crit, and we need that crit rate so much for this build. Now, moving on to our next set, we have got the Master's Inferno on the front bar here, and uh, this guy is going to increase our spell damage by 600 when we use our knockback on the fire staff. So our stun will be a huge buff for us going into the rest of our combo. Very important part of this build's damage. And then finally on the back bar, we have got the Black Rose Restoration Staff, the only defensive item that we have for this build, and that is to give us major vitality on our healing ward. Um, we only have the single heal from healing ward and then the health recovery. So major vitality goes a really long way on this spec to giving us the healing power we need so that we can be durable enough and still play that high damage kite style that we want to play. Now these weapons are of course both infused. We talked about the weapon spell damage enchant on the back, but on the front bar we have gone with the shock enchant. And it's important that you pick shock here because this has a 20% chance to apply minor vulnerability to the target, meaning they'll take 8% more damage from the rest of your combos. So definitely going to be the best burst option out of the enchants that we can pick for the Torx pack spec. Now, taking a look at the jewelry, we are full infused with those brand new glyphs. These things are absolutely amazing because they add the sustain that they would normally add if we were going for Magicka and Stamina Recovery here. However, we get that free health recovery on top of it as well. And that's just going to go a huge way to our survivability in PvP. With the changes to healing power being lower in Greymore, the addition of health recovery to any build is going to help supplement that lack of durability from losing that bit of healing power. So this is going to go a long way to keeping us alive, especially on something like a Nightblade where we can kite and hug stealth. That health regen tick will really help. And then, of course, on the gear, we have got full Maximum Magicka Enchants. One of them's not even the proper gold one here. But we have got full Divines as well, and I have a single well-fitted. Now, this is up to you guys. The Stamina Sustain on this build can be fairly tricky, especially when you're just starting to play it. So you might want to add some well-fitted to the build. You could even go full 7 well-fitted on this thing, and you would have great sustain. I would say even the Invigorating trait this patch might be a good option because we really utilize all the sustain that we can get from it but at the end of the day if you want to go for the biggest damage possible divines is going to be the way to go and that additional crit healing that it provides on the shadow mundus now will actually be really awesome for your defense too so i gotta say team divines on this one and then add well fitted as you feel you need it
Now taking a look at our skills, starting off on our destruction staff bar. The first ability we have is Swallow Soul. Your primary spammable for the build. Ignore the lower tooltip on our offensive abilities here. Keep in mind we have the Torx Pact Poke plus the Master Staff Destro. So our tooltips would be a lot higher if we were actually in combat. Nonetheless, this is going to be fantastic damage mixed in with our Torx Pact Enchant and a partially charged heavy or a light attack. We are going to deal a lot of damage to people just with our poke at all times. And we heal for 36% of the damage inflicted every two seconds. The heal off this is pretty beefy too, so it fits nice into this build as well. You might be tempted to go for Force Pulse or something else here, but don't, because if you do, we don't have a uh, siphoning skill on our front bar, and we need that for the 8% max mag that it provides as well. Now, the next ability we have is Flame Clench. This is pretty much your primary stun for the build, as well as your primary damage buffer. We get 600 additional base spell damage when we use Flame Clench. So that's going to go a long way to increasing the damage of the rest of our combo. And uh, basically what you're going to do is after your light attack poke and you're in stealth, you go for that partial charged heavy or fully charged heavy into your flame clench and then drop the rest of your combo on your opponent afterwards. Now the next ability we have is Camouflaged Hunter. You guys know why this is here for that minor berserk that it provides. It can also add a little bit of stealth detect, but we have the detect potion, so we really don't need to use this outside of just the passive slot for that minor berserk. Very important on this build because it will increase our Torx Pact enchant damage as well. Now the next ability we have is Inner Light. This is going to provide us with that passive Major Prophecy uh, buff, which we need to have that higher crit rate. And of course we get 7% total maximum Magicka for slotting Inner Light on our front bar too. Um, that mixed with, of course, Swallow Soul gives us the higher max mag value that we see on the front bar for this spec. And then finally we've got Merciless Resolve. Now this one's kind of up to you. I'll go over Merciless first though. Um, in this new patch, they've changed Merciless to give you that critical healing and damage bonus when you deal the light attacks with the bow instead of making you more durable. And then, of course, once you've dealt five light or heavy attacks, you can shoot the spectral bow, dealing a huge amount of damage and healing you for 50% of the damage dealt if you're close enough to the target. This is the highest damaging attack on this build by a long shot. It does so much damage, and we can shoot it at a distance too. This skill essentially gives us kill potential if we are just in range with our target. They have to be afraid that we can blast them down with this. Now, I would recommend this patch because they changed Merciless to give you that critical damage bonus that you definitely stick with this on the uh, front bar. I was in the video using the Sigic Guild Elemental Weapon instead of Merciless here. That's actually a viable option too, but you lose a little bit of critical damage bonus. For the sake of this new patch, I definitely think I would keep Merciless instead. But Elemental Weapon on this build just adds so much extra burst to the combo. You guys will see in the footage, we can get some nasty one-shots with Elemental Weapon. So it is a skill totally worth trying if you guys haven't tried it on this spec before. And then finally, we have got Soul Harvest for our ultimate. And I love this guy because it deals a lot of damage, increases the damage we deal against our opponent by 20%, and that's everything, including our Torx Pact Enchants. And then finally, we get the Major Defile, and while slotted, we get 10 extra ultimate when we kill an opponent. This means that if we are getting successful ganks, we will be dropping ultimates down like crazy. And then on top of it, if we don't get the kill with this ultimate, it'll increase the damage that we do afterwards by a huge amount. So it's really likely that we can get a huge combo with the Soul Harvest and then into the Merciless. Not a lot of people are going to survive that. Torx Pact and Chance on top. Now taking a look at that back bar, this is primarily our uh, Kite Slash Healing Support Bar. So the first ability we have is Concealed Weapon. This is really here for that movement speed that it provides. We actually can set an opponent off balance by using this, but it doesn't really fit into the rest of our combo. It's really just to keep us a lot faster when we're in cloak. On a Magicka Nightblade, you need to have that speed, I think, especially in PvP. It just helps you stay alive so much better. And then the next ability we have is Race Against Time. This is our primary access to Snare and Immobilization Removal. Very important to have this on a Magblade. Magblade's biggest weakness is getting held down in place if you're not playing a bulkier build. So you absolutely need an ability like this. It also provides us with Minor Force, which is going to increase all the damage we do again, which is super fantastic. And then finally, we've got the Healing Ward. This is our only spammable heal for the build. We get a little bit of healing from Swallow Soul, a little bit of health recovery, but Healing Ward is going to be the option when you really need that burst heal. And with our Black Rose Resto Staff, the amount of healing it gives you afterwards is really good too. 
Honestly, Healing Ward on this build is the Saving Grace skill so that we can actually play the Mag Blade and stay alive enough. It has a lot of potential healing power. Um, you just got to be smart with it. It's very expensive, so if you spam it too much, you'll find yourself running out of resources. And then finally, we got Shadow Image here. This is probably the most important defensive skill we have on the Magicka Nightblade. Um, it's between this and Cloak, but I say Shadow Image is more important because, again, Magicka Nightblade's biggest weakness on a squishy build is being held still. This allows you to teleport back to where your shade was, and it'll last for 20 seconds. Of course, the shade can also apply Minor Maim to the target and deal a bit of damage too, but it's really going to be useful for that teleport. On this build, I cannot stress enough the importance that you always have a shade down because you're going to run into a situation where the only way out is to shade out. So you always need to make sure that you keep your shade down on this spec. It will allow you to get out, cloak up, reset, reshade, and re-engage with your targets. It is the ultimate defensive ability that we kind of have. Now, the next skill we've got is Shadowy Disguise, and this is, of course, our access to stealth. We get a guaranteed critical strike coming out of our cloak, too, so just helping us amplify that critical damage build that we're playing. But, yeah, pretty much just here for stealth. There are tons of counters to stealth in the game right now, and that's why I say it's so important that you keep that shade down and you have Race Against Time to Strong Heal as well. The mix of these defensive abilities together is what makes Magblade strong, but you have to use them together. If you just try to uh, focus on just shade, or just cloaking you'll find yourself running into a lot of trouble and this brings me to the ultimate we're running on the back bar and that's temporal guard for the minor protection um, and of course the teleport to reset if we get hit super hard the shade plus temporal guard combo on a night blade is super trolly because we get a double teleport not only is that really going to throw people off from our positioning but it's a huge save for a build like this as well it'll give us the health back the resource back with this ultimate too and then finally that minor protection we get on our back bar here when you're running around and kiting um, and trying to defend yourself you will likely be on this bar so it's good to have this uh, bit of damage reduction here as well now let's go over those champion points for you guys Starting off in our tower tree, we've got four Siphoner, uh, 44 and Warlord, and nothing and anything else. Siphoner, I just had a few points left over, but we got to break free in PvP. Now, in the Lover Tree, we've got a nice even spread here. 56 Arcanist being our primary regen, followed by 43 Mooncalf and 43 Healthy. All of our sustains, super important. And, of course, we get that Wild Running passive for a little bit of extra sustain when we sprint and a little bit of additional movement speed. Now, in the Shadow Tree, I've got the flat 4040 Tumbling and Shadow Ward. Um, these are super important. You could definitely put a few more in Tumbling if you guys wanted. The Roll Dodge is a little bit of a better defensive option than the block for this build, but you definitely need to do both of these in PvP. Um, even though we don't have the biggest stamina pool, we're going to be rolling quite a bit. And that's why I say if you need, you can add more well-fitted to this build to help pad that sustain. Now, moving on to the blue trees, in the Apprentice, we've got a super stack tree. 61 Elfborn, 64 Elemental Expert, and 64 in uh, Spell Erosion. Really nice even spread here to give us the maximum damage uh, bonus that we can kind of get, just due to the diminishing returns on champion points. But yeah, just focusing on that outgoing magic damage, I've got nothing in the increased healing done because we are focusing on that damage more than anything else. Um, moving on to our Atronach tree, we've got 81 in Mastered Arms, and that's it. I didn't opt to get the Tactician passive because we don't have the additional off-balance damage anyway, so I thought, eh, whatever. We'll just uh, omit that and stack this tree more heavily, giving our Torx Pact more guaranteed increased damage as well. And then, of course, this is going to up all of our uh, direct damage, and that's all of our attacks outside of the dots. Now, we've got nothing in the Ritual. And then moving on to the Steed, we've got 53 Resistant and 61 in Ironclad. Um, a nice spread here. I really like to focus these trees still because, well, direct incoming damage is a squishy build's biggest weakness to get smacked down. And then, of course, we got to have that crit resist because that'll prevent us from getting smacked down as well. Moving on to the Lady Tree, we've got 32 Hardy, 32 Elemental, and 18 in Thick Skin, with 24 in Light Armor Focus. So uh, a focus on just reducing the incoming direct damage um, that we take, more so than the damage over time. Uh, the damage over time is definitely something that can hurt us as a Nightblade, especially if we get popped out of Stealth. Um, but that being said, we've got a lot of health recovery, a lot of healing over time with the healing ward too. So we can actually take a bit of dot abuse, but I did want to put a few points here, um, just to kind of taper the damage down. And then of course we got light armor focus. This is important because we're in a light armor build and we just don't have a lot of physical resistance. This will help pad that. 
And then finally in the Lord Tree, we've got 27 Quick Recovery and 23 in Bastion. And the reason I have this kind of split here is to up the Healing Ward's power. Um, we'll up the amount of healing that it gives us and we'll up the size of the shield that uh, the heal scales off of as well. So there we go. Okay, let's get into that PvP commentary. Keep in mind that this is from the Greymore patch. This build will be stronger in the upcoming Stone Thorns patch. Nonetheless, we are going to go for an opening combo on that player there. And there you see the end Kalorian proc actually finishing that player off as the other friendly red player goes in for uh, the attack there too. We're going to go right back into Cloak. Now see how I try to get that light attack poke off and I cancel it with the Cloak there. Um, that's just to keep us in stealth going into that combo. Those players did a great read though and they quickly put pressure onto me and you see me shade out right away and reset my shade down. So important that we keep the shade down on this build is such an important survival technique. There you see we take a huge smack from that Warden and uh, I was out of range of the shade so I was forced to use the uh, other ultimates to survive but it was a good call because there's a lot of blue just looking around for me there and I'm just going to keep in stealth and get back behind the rocks here. If you find yourself taking too much pressure in one area especially on a stealth build it's almost always the best plan to just reset your position to a different spot and then re-engage but here you can see the blue are wrapping around the inside of, uh, of this uh, kind of tree place there I don't know what to call it and I'm just going to go out the bottom side here. Um, again, we're just going to change our position. I'm going to set a new shade down because they are kind of camping my old shade. And I want to have a safe spot to teleport. Go for a bit of a combo open on that guy there. Just kind of trying to piss the group off a little bit here. We managed to cloak away and we just shade as the uh, curse goes off, breaking our cloak there. But that's okay. We already got the line of sight from the shade. And we set the new one down right away. And uh, I'm just going to try for the re-engage here. Just reset our buffs and uh, go for the light attack poke. We didn't break our cloak for too long there. I go for the target shift as that guy gets out of my uh, line of sight. And then again, this guy is camping my shade and he right away pops us with the stealth detect. So important that we keep the shade up to counter that stealth detect. And uh, the stealth detect only lasts for five seconds. So there you see, we did a good job just kind of reading the cooldown of it. I try to go for some damage into that Sork there. Unfortunately, putting a lot of pepper into his engine guardian and not the player. So again, I'm forced to back out here. And uh, this is very normal, I think, if you have so many enemy players around. We just have to be really careful how we engage here, have a really high stealth uptime, and pick and choose those fights. We just about kill this guy, and he's going to get away and we take the fear there's the meteor as well we hold block to prevent the meteor from uh from doing too much damage there and cloak up right away as we exit the aoe field a big direction change very important when you use stealth to direction change as often as possible especially when you've got people right on top of you and we find just a little moment of respite and it's just this sork here we try to go for the knockback she does a good job blocking the first one and I'm not going to be able to do anything off of the knockback that I got on the second attempt. I try to go for the ultimate out of stealth there. We get some good damage into her, but not the crits we were looking for. And there we see again, I just uh, show myself out of stealth for a moment. And then we direction change as we enter stealth. Just kind of throwing the group off there. A lot of them run in the wrong direction. And I can keep working on this Sork. A good tactic when you play Nightblade is to do that when you have a lot of people chasing you. And you have a target that you've injured is to cloak up and go through the group because the injured player will hide at the back of the group and then he ends up coming right to where you want him to and he's not defended either. Um, we're doing a good job though, just kind of working our way around there. I get a big smack into the Sork there with the ultimate. I try to hit her with uh, with my Swallow Soul there. She streaks around trying to stay alive, goes for her ultimate as well and uh, we're unable to kill her through the resto ult so I just uh, pop off just the heavy attack there, go right back into Cloak and we're putting a lot of pressure on her here. She uh, doesn't have her shield up either. Oh man, she tries to streak up to the top there. And we're going to hit her with that knockback into the poke here. And it looks like she is running low on stamina. She didn't break that stun there. But uh, we're taking a bit of pressure as well here from the other blue players. We're just going to reset again and hit her with the combo out of stealth. She just didn't have the resources left to try to stay alive there. I go for the ranged combo on this guy there. He gets the dodge roll as he heads into the keep. We definitely would have killed him with that combo. But a great play by him nonetheless. Now moving on to our next fight here. We are inside a friendly keep and there's a lot of blue trying to stop me from having this keep. So I actually go for the resto staff poke and there you see unfortunately my Kalorians uh, actually 
procs off the resto poke and hits the npc that is not the target i wanted to hit so we just go back around the corner we're going to try to reset with another combo there but these blue are moving around a lot so i'm having trouble uh getting good targeting here we get a big smack into this guy here i take a lot of damage myself and right away we shade out of there remember what i said we always have to have that shade down and there you see we didn't have the shade down and i'm forced to use my defensive ultimate instead of getting caught in a bad position i uh, feel like this is the better bet we get into the cloak right away which is perfect and we can just kind of get a little bit of respite here and the blue players are going to start chasing me up the corner here i actually intentionally show myself as i go up the corner there because i want some to chase me i don't want them to not know where i am entirely i still want to have some action and some fight here this guy comes up the corner we give him quite a bit of a smack and he decides to uh head back down to the rest of the blues and i'm just going to pop some rest though heavy attacks and stuff off on these guys shade back to where my shade was and there you see a huge combo come down from those guys good thing we got the sidestep there that would have killed us and we get into the healing ward here and then right away into the cloak and there you see that healing power off the healing ward really fantastic even better in the coming patch um as long as we can make sure that we get a little bit of distance between us we can heal up very quickly and now it's just a bit of a waiting game so i'm staying in stealth here these guys are camping the areas where they thought that i was i just go for the poke on this guy there i pull the stun from the npc which is actually really good because it gives me cc immunity to go for that finishing combo there and we bring that girl down and uh she is going to try to be res or the other player here is going to try to res her and unfortunately i don't make it back in time but we are going to uh, quickly re-kill the downed player there as they don't have any resource when they get up off the ground. And we can keep that body down like that. I go back to the other side here just noticing that the blue are starting to uh, piece out of this keep. I just want to attract a little bit more attention, honestly. Uh, you don't have to show yourself like this, but I am just trying to keep the action around where I am here. These guys still haven't gone for the res. There you see my Calorian proc on, on uh, this guy here. I go for the target change there. He's unfortunately body blocked by the NPC, so I couldn't get the combo as soon as I wanted. But there you see we got a huge crit on him, almost bringing him down. And I'm going to shade back out to safety. Shade is so important for this build, guys. You absolutely must use it. This guy's going to attempt the res there. And oh, wow. Big Calorian combo into the Swallow Soul. Huge amounts of damage there. And he just goes down right away. We're going to reset the shade again. And I jump back down, hoping that I could get in a better position than that. By the time I had hit the jump button, I realized that I was jumping into a ton of AoE. We reset the shade in the corner again. And now we've got the blue on top of us. This guy comes around the corner here. I just go for the fully charged heavy and then i go for the ultimate picking uh this other player as the target there that was kind of accidental but that's okay again making sure we use that shade to reset here so important because if we get caught trying to cloak in all this aoe garbage we are going to die we need to have the shade to survive that i try to go for the combos on these guys again but again i'm forced out uh to use my shade again just because they're applying a lot of aoe pressure there and now we've got a guy kind of camping my shade so the plan here is to just jump down the uh, the edge, try to get a uh, little bit of a break from the distance, and then we shade back up to where we are. The guy here is still camping my shade, I know that, but it is just the single player. And now we've got more players coming around the corner here. We hit this guy with the light attack, perfectly not breaking stealth as well. He starts spamming AoE, and we hit him with that fire staff knockback into the Calorian. So much damage, and that poor guy didn't know what hit him. Now we're going to go for the next combo on this uh, Templar. There we break his Blazing Shield and send him flying off the edge. I shade back to where we were again. Try to set the new one down, but unfortunately I was hit by the negate there. I'm not sure if that cancelled my shade. Oh, wow. Get a huge combo off on this guy here. This guy is attempting to go for the res, and we just hit him with the uh, knockback. We're not going to commit to that. I go for the fake jump sure off the edge. Looks back like into the shade. There, so, Super uh, unlucky you know, there uh, as the negate gets like dropped on me up, right as somebody, I shade uh, back again. But we do manage to get the next, uh, the next shade down. Yeah. And uh, I think at this point, I definitely shouldn't be dicking around in this spot. And we are going to pay the price for that. Nonetheless, though, it was a, a good job getting a few ganks there. Now, moving on to our next fight here. We got some more ganks. Honestly, this all I do on this build is just chase groups around and gank everybody that I can. Great dodge from that yellow player to prevent himself from being spiked down by our combo there. And again, we're going to shade out from the sorcerer. So important to keep that shade down. We're going to reset it here. Try to go for a combo on this Sork. There you see the Calorians hits him and the rest of the splat as he streaks away. We managed to finish that Sork and shade right back out again. 
as uh, as these yellow are very distracted by the EP they're fighting on the other side. This is such a good position for us to be in because people aren't really looking for us. So we can get some big damage here. And I try to go for a big combo on this guy there. He does a good job holding block, but he needed to do something else past that. Um, he prevented the rest of our burst combo, but the other uh, red player jumping on top was just too much pressure. And there you see the beautiful range of this build. Uh, no one's really safe as long as they're within our firepower range. So we can put some big damage into them there you see we get a no crit poke on that guy we do a huge amount of damage for not landing a single crit there and uh, i shade out of the danger again the yellow group is definitely larger than the red group here and they're running around zerging them down one at a time so we got to be careful i go for the combo on this guy there into the ultimate we get a huge smack there he's not fast enough to respond and uh, we have to go for the shade into the shade that was super risky uh, because the shade was not in a great position to teleport to but I still have to think the direction change at the end of the day is super important too because you're just not where people thought you were before. And there you see we managed to shade back to the rock here. Still in a fairly dangerous position um, with a lot of players looking for us. The siege coming down now too. And we're just going to peel on out of there after getting a nice sly getaway using that shade. We set it down again and we go for that uh, concealed weapon combo. Oh my gosh. The, uh, the elemental weapon, sorry. There you see, we almost just one-shot that guy <laughs> out of stealth. Just so much damage. There's the combo on this guy there, followed up with the last poke to bring him down as well. And we're just going to try to kite our way back out here. The yellow are really putting some pressure on us. But we did set that fresh shade down, and we're going to be able to teleport out of there. Set a new shade down around the corner here and right back into stealth. And the next time we come back around this house, there are no yellow left because EP killed them all. And for our final fight here, guys, we got more ganks, of course. Look at that beautiful damage coming right out of stealth here. And we're just going to glock people out of the side of this group, almost killing that guy. He's dropped to so little HP. And of course, we had that shade set down. There's no way I'd go in on that without having that shade ready on this build. So important on the Magicka Nightblade, even more so than a Stamina Nightblade, because we just don't have the Stam Sustain or the Medium Armor to get out of things that the Stam Blade can and there you see right away, we go for that uh, that proc, the Calorians, into the Spectral Arrow. We don't get a single crit on this guy. Super unlucky, but he's still going to uh, die just because the damage is too much anyway. And there's the Calorians proc. We hit him with the poke and the ice, the ice ball, finishing him off there. And we're just going to shade back out again and just keep terrorizing these guys. This guy here, fairly low rank. He's going to take some big damage from us just hanging on at uh, at uh, what looks like 1 to 5% HP, and there's the counter gank from the enemy Nightblade. We get into Cloak here, and I just popped my Detect Pot. So this Nightblade doesn't know that we have the Detect Pot yet because we haven't dropped on any Nightblades with our Detect Pot, and here we see two Nightblades in stealth. I go for the poke there, and we're just going to hit him with uh, the wrong swap there. Honestly, that should have been a Swallow Soul. That was such a bad bar swap cast on my part, but hey, it happens. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, that could have been a nice kill on that Nightblade. Nonetheless, get a little bit of Magicka back here. The Chlorian's Legacy just shooting Ice Balls at everybody that it can. Um, we're just going to try to get another nice combo here. The yellow players have really uh, kind of piled up, and they're just healing each other like crazy now. So this is a good time for me to just go for some of those Resto Heavies, try to get my resources all the way back up to full, because, yep, they push out back for the re-engage. Still not uh, wise to my Detect Potion. We get a huge combo on that Nightblade out of stealth, almost one-shotting him with the combo. But, unfortunately, he does a great job defending himself. We are unable to finish him off as he skirts back towards the uh, rest of the yellow here. And I just didn't want to follow him into that clump because that's not going to be good for me. Oh, man, this guy is so squishy. We're just going to quickly finish him off. And with that, I will let you guys enjoy the rest of the fight. As we say our goodbyes here, be sure to send in your clips for the top five, or if you want to send in a build to be featured on the channel, to ChristopherESO at Hotmail.com. You can give me a look-see on Twitter to keep up to date with my shenanigans. Give me a follow on Twitch as well if you guys want to catch those live streams when we're in that Buildcraft action. Um, check out my website, ChristopherESO.com. We've got written guides to this build, all my other builds at as well and of course it is a hub for my ESO content we are sponsored by what the fast their VPN for gamers they give me better
better ping to my favorite games and, and they're free to try for the first 30 days via the link in the description below. And then last but certainly not least, a big thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Without you guys' help, I wouldn't be doing this. I know I say it every time, but I really mean it. Thank you guys so much for helping out. Look at that big bomb that the EP brings us here at the end. Have a great night, everybody.